But the big ideas behind Nurtured Heart are that, as Kelly pointed out, all of us have some intense peace to us, and our children in particular, some of them express that more vigorously than others. And in Nurtured Heart, we believe that that's a good thing. And sometimes the way intensity is expressed, it doesn't feel like a good thing, at least not all the time. So part of it is learning, really challenging ourselves to reframe how we think about intensity and understanding that intensity has different forms. Some of you have kids that talk back, that yell, that are you know, maybe openly defiant. Others of you have kids that clam up and won't talk to you, that are excessively shy. Some kids fall in the category of extra sensitive, where things just bother them more than they, other, other kids are bothered by the same things. All of those are ways of being intense. Some kids are just really, 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 really excited about stuff all the time. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's good news, but it's pretty intense too. So we think of all those things as intensity and try to find way, a way of thinking about that as a good thing. That's one big idea. Um, another big idea in Nurtured Heart is that um, kids really want relationship and that they will use whatever tools they have to get it. And if they don't have positive tools, they'll use negative tools. But that what they really want is that interaction of relationship, which is not the same thing as attention. Some of them use attention as um, a proxy for relationship because that's all they know. But um, attention isn't really healthy relationship. So we're about helping kids find ways to get healthy relationship and that whenever we interact with children, and again, um, Claire, you can ramp this up to people in general, but I'm, I'm gonna speak up mostly from children, um, that in any relationship, when we're giving that time and energy and talking to someone, we're sharing our energy. It's really one of the ways we think about it. And energy, we can think of as a proxy for love. So really, when we're talking, giving any kind of attention at all, we're really spreading love around. It sounds like a, a 60s thing, and it is in a way, but it's really true. So what we're about is kind of watching what we pay attention to in terms of how we spread that energy and what we're giving it to. Um, another b underlying belief is that everybody needs healthy relationships. And if kids aren't creating them in a good way, they're gonna get them in a bad way because they need relationships anyway. So we're about how to switch that up so it's better for the child than what they're currently getting. So we're about helping that child move from a life that's giving them a lot of negative feedback, which I heard some parents say, to a world in which they feel successful most of the time. Because I think if I asked you, that's what all of you would want at some basic level is for your children to feel successful and that, that they're in the world being happy doing what they need to grow up into happy capable adults and when we're giving them a lot of negative feedback it doesn't feel good to them and it sure doesn't feel good to, to you or to me when I do it um, so we really want to kind of switch that over and in Nurtured Heart there are three basic pieces to how we do things and we can think of them as tools that um, the metaphor is a three-legged stool and you really have to watch all three of them because if you don't the system is out of balance and it's really not going to work very well so the most important piece and we'll talk some more about that later tonight is what we call energizing success which means paying attention to what's going right what is it the child is doing well that probably they've never noticed before and most of the time we've never noticed before so how can we switch what we notice to noticing what's going well instead of what's going wrong. And really um, using that, leveraging that to expand the child's um, awareness of being successful. That is the single most effective tool. And it's not the same as praise in the sense of generalized praise um, and kind of artificial self-esteem inflating. It's about a microscopic look at what the child is doing and helping them see all of the good decisions they're making um, in and amongst the few, really the few poor decisions they make. So we're really about changing how we pay attention to that and that is the single most important piece because it's the piece we pay the least attention to and we'll talk a lot about why that is. Um, the second part is refusing to put our energy into negativity and things the kids are doing wrong. So we're gonna be paying a lot of attention to what's going right, 
we're going to be paying attention to what's going wrong, but we're not pouring any oil on that fire. So, and we'll talk about how to do that. Because when you do that, you're um, inflating that view for the, from the child's perspective of that negative piece of that self-identity. So we, we want to be poking those bubbles as often as we can and really not paying any attention to that. So it's kind of like extinguishing behavior in a way. Um, so that's the second piece. So we're into noticing what's right and giving no energy to what's wrong. And then the third piece is uh, what we think of as providing a true consequence, which is really about having rules, very clearly articulated rules, enforced ruthlessly, absolutely ruthlessly. And it may sound funny, but the more rules, the better. Because the way we think about rules is paying attention to rules that don't get broken. And that sounds counterintuitive, but we'll talk a lot about that. So when you think about the more rules you have, the more opportunities you get to say, yay, yay, you didn't break a rule. Yay, yay, you didn't break rule number five. Yay, yay, you didn't break rule number six or seven or eight or nine or 10 or 20 or 153. So it's really about more opportunities to create success, especially for kids that are extremely intense and you're having trouble mining for success. You can create a million successes by having a whole bunch of rules that aren't being broken. Um, and that may sound silly now, but when we talk about how we apply that, it won't sound nearly as silly as it does right now. So those three tools, paying attention to what's going right, refusing to pour energy on what's going wrong, and enforcing rules relentlessly are the three tools that we're going to have to work with. And we're going to talk about one every week, essentially. So tonight is going to be... Um, kind of basic nurtured heart concepts. Next week, we're going to talk about the success peaks. The third week, we're going to talk about um, not energizing negativity. And it's not the last week that we're really going to talk about consequences. And I know many of you are experiencing this great wave of disappointment because you came in here hoping that the first week I would give you some big stick or a big carrot or something to go home and motivate your child. And, but it doesn't work that way. So it won't be till the last week that we'll find out about how to have consequences. Because the truth of the matter is, you're all paying too much attention to that part right now. So I really need to help you see how to pay attention to all the other parts first. I am absolutely sure that you're all on the rule part, um, but we'll talk more about how to make that an effective tool.